This is a step by step video to build the SLS camera using the Xbox One sensor. Connect for Windows SDK version 2. I want to show you how I built my SLS. I've added extras to it over time, but I'll try and show you the basic setup. It'll give you an idea of setting it up so you can build it whichever way you want. Now, the minimum system requirements for the tablet or laptop is to have a USB 3 port, 64 bit processor, dual core, 3.1 GHz, and 4 GB of RAM. If your computer doesn't meet these specs, then you can build your SLS camera using the Xbox 360 sensor and the Connect for Windows SDK version 1.8. And I have a video on building an SLS using the Xbox 360 sensor. I'll leave the link in the comments. The parts I use are as followed the stabilizer. The Xbox One Connect sensor, the project box, 200mm by 120 by 75mm, cold shoe adapter arm, Connect AC adapter. Now you don't need the actual power adapter, I just use the box the sensor connects into. So if you can find this part on its own for sale, you'll save yourself some money. Jack connectors, 10 AA battery holder, tablet tripod mount, inline fuse with a 4 amp fuse. So it's up to you what uh, fuse holder and fuse you want to use. The inline fuse, which is the blade type of fuse. Oh uh, yeah, glass fuse. USB 3 cable. Now this is optional as well, I used one which just angled because it was just neater, but it's up to you. And the, you need to download the Connect for Windows SDK version 2 from the Microsoft website. Now the tablet I use is a Microsoft Surface Pro 4. It's an i5 6th generation CPU with 4GB RAM running Windows 10 Pro. Well, to attach your project box, your stabiliser. The box mainly just, it just holds all the cables, keeps everything nice and tidy. And also attach your sensor to the front. cable that's coming out the back of the sensor it's a really big thick chunky cable and that's what takes most of the space up in the project box so what I've done is I've tied the cable up as tight as I could so this, the cable from the sensor runs into the project box and then runs back out again as you can see in the picture now the AC power adapter which you can get for the uh, sensor to plug it into the mains to use on a computer on this connection box it's got four amps so that's why I've used a four amp fuse but it doesn't really fit into the box. So what I've done is I've attached this junction box underneath the project box. And the sensor, the cable, which is tied up inside the project box, goes into the project box, back out again, and it connects into the front of that junction box. I've used a 45 degree USB 3 cable, short one. That'll connect into the junction box, and then goes back into the project box. Like I say, it's just I've just used that for just to keep it nice and tidy, nice and neat. And then the male to male USB 3 cable then connects into that and that'll run out out so that's gonna connect into your tablet. Now the batteries, the 10 AA batteries should power the sensor longer than the battery lasts on your tablet. Should be fine for the battery life. Now I've got a switch, I've put a switch on mine, but your battery pack will connect into that junction box at the side of where you've plugged in the USB. And on the top you connect your closure adapter arm and your tripod mount. And then you should have something which looks something like that. In regards to the power adapter that goes into the sensor, if you're on a budget, there's an alternative way of powering the sensor. 
And on the Xbox One cable, if you look at the connection, it has the USB 3 port, and above it, it's built in, it is the uh, power port. You can separate the power, put your own power cable, you can put it over mean soldering a separate power cable onto the board of the sensor. I've not gone down that route, and I'm not going to cover that. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that go through it. If you just look for Xbox One sensor power mod, you should be able to find tutorials on that. There's plenty of them. So if you do a run through of how it's set up, make it a bit easier. You can see where the power pack connects to the sensor's connection box, the USB, the 90 degree angle connects onto the junction box. The USB cable then plugs into the female USB 3 port, which then goes into the laptop or tablet. And then you've got your sensor, which connects into the little junction box. So that's how it'll all connect up. So you get all your sensors connected up, get your tablet turned on or your laptop, get the sensor connected to the laptop, everything's powered on, you just need to wait now and it should install the drivers for the connect sensor automatically. This may, might take a few minutes, so I'd leave it until you see the pop up notification that it's installed. If it doesn't install, you can always run Windows updates and it'll install that way. Once all the drivers are installed, and you've downloaded and installed Connect Studio version 2, you can run Connect Studio. And if Connect Studio launches and you see this screen, you can't seem to do anything with it. I've had this happen to me a couple of times. I found the best way to do it is just uninstall it and reinstall it again. You just don't seem to be able to do anything with it when you see, when you see this window. When you first open Connect Studio, you'll, you'll see this window. Top left hand corner, you'll see not connected there's a little button providing all your sensors connected up and turned on if you just click that button that'll connect your sensor and you should be able to see an image so I've connected my sensor now I can see the colour depth if you keep getting a pop up and the sensor keeps disconnecting your tablet or your laptop what you're using is probably not up to the recommended specifications it's a problem I had when I first connected up and the first mate built the Xbox One SLS the version 2 SLS I was using HP leak pads and it just wasn't up to the job and it just kept dropping out. That'll probably be the problem. If you look on the front of your sensor, you should see three lights, three infrared lights in the middle. Now I'll have a walk around with the SLS. So you can see this is the colour depth view. I find this view on this camera is the easiest way to see. You can see orbs flying across because it's like a black dot. You see any movement, you can see it very easily on this using the colour depth. Now, if you want to change to the infrared view, you'll see the little at the top, it's got a monitor live and there's like a little button with the cog. You just want to press that little button with the cog and you'll get a little menu pop up. And you'll see in that little menu there, you've got the infrared plugin. You just want to check that box, tap OK, and that'll change to your infrared view. Now, when you want to record your session, uh, all the footage, look at the top tab so you'll see the record, click on record, and then just tap the little red record button. Now what this will start doing now, it'll record, it records the infrared camera, the colour depth, and also you have a 3D camera, which is at the top tab you'll see. That's the 3D camera. I don't really use this camera very much, so I just use, usually use the infrared camera and the colour depth. But it's always there if you need it as an extra. But when you start recording, it automatically records all three. The audio, I don't record audio. I turn my audio down to get feedback. And also I use a little action camera as well, which is on the SLS. 
So I record my audio through that. So I'll go stand in front of it now, so you can see. You get a little stick man. Now I'll change it to the colour depth. So you can see where it's like. I'm gonna walk in front of it now. And get a little stick man. And also if there's multiple people there you'll all be different colours like little jelly babies. So when you're finished and stop recording, you turn it all off. All your data, everything that's recorded is in a little folder. I will go into Documents, Connect Studio, Repository, and that's the, that's the format that it's recorded it in. If you double click on that, Connect Studio will launch. And here's where you can choose which camera you want to view. Um, first of all, if you want them both, I'm just click the connect in the bottom left hand corner and then play, and you'll get the infrared camera at the same time, so it's, they're both playing simultaneously. You can go to the playback 3D view if you want by clicking at the top tab, tab next to the 2D view. That'll put the 3D camera, and we'll go back to the 2D view. And like with the little cog buttons there, you can change them over. You can have the colour depth on the left and the infrared or on the right, or whichever way you want it. Now what I tend to do now is I'll use screen recording software and I'll just record the screen, so I'm just recording the cameras. Because this is... Uh, I've not found anything that converts it over to a format that we can play on your computer without studio. You can also use a software called Fast, and this is the, the latest version. K4W, it's Fast stands for Flexible Action and Articulate Skeleton Toolkit. I'll leave a link for the files to download it. You can go straight to the folder, there's no installing it, click on the exe file. And as long as you send the sensors turned on, just stretch it out a bit. You have to just click connect to connect sensor. Now it's just a grayscale um, on the software. It's very, very quick. It's very simple. But it works. I actually change the mirror image so what I'm seeing on the camera is the correct orientation of the room. I'll go out and stand in front of the camera, turn blue, and you'll see like a little very thin stick figure. It's an alternative to the studio. So not to make things confusing, when I was making this video I took a lot of the stuff off like the infrared lights and the, um, the little action camera on the front. Uh, but this is my SLS camera as it is today. So on the front I've got see, an action camera that I've converted to night vision by taking the infrared filter out. On the other side is an infrared light. I took out the metal casing just to reduce the weight. I 3D printed my own case. In the first attempt, it, the heat from the infrared light 
it melted the keys, so I've had to put a little 12 volt brushless fan in the back of that to suck, suck the heat out. That's powered on at the side of the box. There's a little switch with a green LED. That powers on the infrared light, which has got the battery pack, eight AA batteries inside the box. On the front of the box, I've got a voltage meter, which tells me what's left in them 10 AA batteries that power the sensor. On the other side is the main power switch, power the sensor on, and below that, female socket. So if the battery pack inside goes flat, I don't want to be unscrewing all the box in pitch black. So I can just plug another battery pack in from the outside and power the sensor pack up. But I've never actually used that yet, so it's not something necessary. I've also used the brackets that come with that, an action camera. Just to just fix the, the tablet cradle, just to support it really. Just screw it on, tighten it out so it's not all wobbling about. So that's my camera, that's my SLS cameras. I hope this has helped in some way. Or just gives you an idea of building your own. I'll leave all the links to the parts I've used below. Happy go something.